Hi, welcome to the Game Splanner. I'm Jeff the Game Splanner, and today I'm Game Splanning Kanban. Kanban is a two to four player game. It's put out by Stronghold Games. Now, it has just been re released, which is why I'm doing this now. I've had this game for a little while now, and I did a, I had a bit of a slew of doing all the Vita Lasada games last year. And this one I actually held off on because it was out of print. It is now back in print, and I suggest getting it. This is a good game. Uh, it's heavy as all the Vita Lasada games tend to be, but it is a good game. It sits nicely. It's kind of, there's little tweaks, there's little nuances all over the place. There's a lot of stuff you can do. But as I say, it is a good game. Uh, Stronghold have just re released it uh, within the last couple of weeks, so I am doing this video to try and catch that. And please, the gameplay itself, from what I understand, is ex identical. It's identical. It's not a new version, even though it has a new, a slightly new title. It's still Kanban, just the 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 bit of, of subtitle is slightly different. And everything is coming to the same thing. Of course, it is the same game, in essence. So, this is by Vita Lasada, if I hadn't already said that. Uh, Vita Lasada is one of, he's probably my absolute favourite designer. He designs heavy, heavy games with a lot of nuance going on, a lot of thought but very little decision is my experience of it. So you might have, in this game, you have five choices. And once you make that choice, then you've got a little bit of choice within that choice. And that's really the, the, the play of the game, is making those decisions. Once you've chosen one, you can't use that one again. You've got to go to one of the others. This game is in a car factory, so you're developing new cars and, and building them to, to make a product, is the essence of the game. And so there's five different departments within that, uh, that you're going to be moving around and manipulating your way through to be able to use your time as wisely as possible. This realistically is a time management game. So you have this character, Alexa, who is part of the, who is basically a boss, uh, and she just works her way through each of the departments until she gets back to her starting position, at which point there's a scoring right. there. When you have done enough cars or enough things to cars, they've moved around the test track and there's a different type of scoring or a, a, an office meeting, if you will, and you're trying to get as many chairs in that office meeting because you need to listen to them. Now, there's two ways to play. There's a happy way to play and a sad way to play. The sad way to play, you start with a certain number of points and you lose points if you're in a space that is the same department as Alexa and you haven't done anything. On the happy version, the one I play, it's you're starting on zero because every time you find yourself in the same department as Alexa, you can get more points. I much prefer that way of playing than the sad way of playing. Um, but look, you might find that having a negative uh, impact on what you're doing is is a better way to go. That's fine. I haven't done any of the rules for that, but there's very, it's very similar. It's just Alexa has a slightly different value, and that's basically in the rulebook marked in red instead of green, assuming that the rulebook has stayed relatively similar. This is one of those games that because there's so much going on, I miss stuff. Now, um, I am going to do a heck of a lot of editing. So I've done the filming. I haven't done the editing yet, but I will do a heck of a lot of editing on especially the playthrough video, simply because I know that I've missed a whole bunch of stuff. I have picked up that stuff and put it back in, but that's after the fact. And that after the factness is really the kind of the game on this. You kind of got to keep track of every little detail as you're going, because there's a couple of things that uh, I'm not sure which player went first and actually is important with which one got across the line first, so moves a different marker up their icon. Because as soon as that person has moved a their little meeple up those markers, that spot is taken, unless they then move up another thing because they've managed to achieve that goal, in which case that becomes available again. Now, which one moves first? Uh, I'm sorry, I have done, I've missed a couple of things, so please forgive that. I'll try and do it in the right order, but there may be a few things that if you're looking at the screen, just look a little bit, a little bit off. Uh, I'll try to negate that as much as possible, but it may happen, and if so, I do apologise. Uh, it's one of the the, the problems of doing videos with, with this heaviness or this weightiness of games that you're bound to miss a few little things. Uh, I think I've actually caught them all. Uh, eventually, if I haven't, then please comment below uh, on the video with the time. Say, hey, at this time you missed this, this, this. Uh, just so future people who are watching the videos can also have an idea of it. But 
the rules are good. I am solid that I've got every single one of those rules into the two videos. Please watch them. Now, they're in a slightly odd order. The first video is the basics of the general logistics of the game. The second video is the specifics of each department. I think you need to actually watch both videos. I think you need to understand all of the stuff before you really get into the game in order to play it. I, I find that whenever I've played the game, because there's been such a broad distance between the plays, I've had to reread the rules. And what I found is I like to skim rules and kind of go, oh yeah, yeah, I get it. I remember that, I remember that. And then we're playing and I find I'm going back to the rules a heck of a lot. I think simply because I skimmed through them. Uh, I did read them before making the video, so it's okay. I have covered that. But just be aware of that, that this is one of those rule books that you really need to know to be able to guide people through because they're going to be thinking a heck of a lot and they're going to be asking a lot of questions on this game. So if you are someone who enjoys playing heavier games, Kanban is most definitely a game for you. If you're a person who dislikes heavier games, I would avoid this game. Having said that, um, I have noticed that other Vita Lasada games, like Lisboa, have struggled to get back to the table simply because um, I don't know if you're aware, I've said this a few times in the videos, but I had a stroke earlier in the year. So there's been a little bit of a, a, a play with my brain to, I haven't quite grasped Lisboa again. There's, I've always been on the rule book. So I, that one struggled to get back to the table. This one has had the same struggles to get to the table on each side of that. So the actual play of it is, I think, a little bit more straightforward than Lisboa, even though there's a heck of a lot going on. You know, there, there's that whole thing of, do I understand this game? I think I do. I think that if I played this next to each other, so I played it one night and then I played it the next night, uh, for a few nights in a row, I would really be right on top of this game. And I'd, without any in interaction, instruction, or having to look back at rules to see what's happening right now, what, what are my choices at this point in the game. So look, go on, have a look at my videos, watch the game's blades, watch the game's explanation and see what you think. If you like the look of the game, I suggest getting it quickly because I believe that Stronghold have lost the license now or it's kind of reverted back to whoever owned it originally, which means that the printing they've just done that has just been released is the last printing that will happen of that game, as far as I'm aware. So please, have a look at it. Get onto the game. If you like the look of it, get yourself a copy really quickly so that you don't miss out. Uh, I fear that this is going to be one of those games that if it's missed out upon this time around, it's going to come up on eBay at some exorbitant price. So I'll leave it there. If you have any games that you'd like to be games playing, please shoot me an email at thegamesplayer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplayer to keep up to date with the games that I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm games planning. And until next time, enjoy gaming.